Also, in the development, they have no parking that I can see that is really useful to the residents. So once the residents move in, it's like you're living in a city. And you're going to have a city within a rural township or a suburban township. And I think that is totally unfair to the residents. But also for the roads. Um, since I moved back to my, our, my house in 1992, I've driven through the 926-202 intersection between 22 and 25,000 times. So I have a real good idea of what it's like. Now before the bridge was out and the traffic was extremely bad, I could not make left-hand turns out of my development. I couldn't. Okay? Uh, once the, the bridge was closed, it really got very nice and pleasant because I could drive up and down 926 without a problem. Since the bridge has been reopened, all the traffic has not come back, which is good for toll because it's um, not as bad, but it's still not acceptable. An average uh, time, or a common time, coming uh, west on 926 toward the uh, 202, if I stop at the abandoned house, I'm stopped there. That can be a five to ten minute stop to get through the lane. The last five minute stop I had was really a lot of fun because I was so pleased I got there early. But as I look in the rearview mirror, before I left, the line was back over the hill, back to Bridalwood. So my stop was five minutes. The next people were not. The reason it was so fast, there were no trucks for some reason on 920, on 202 during that small time. Behind me, the trucks came up. The line got longer. If you get to Bridalwood, the, the uh, waits from 10 to 25 minutes. Again, it all depends on trucks. That seems to be the very good thing. Mr. Vasper, you hit four minutes, so if you wouldn't mind um, trying to reach the end, I would appreciate that. Okay. Uh, the most important thing is our history, and I think what happened on this property is probably tantamount to our Revolutionary War of success. Um, the generals, or the people in charge of the battle that happened here, some of them were um, up where the farmhouse is on 926, and some of them were up the hill all the way where the fence ends. The, the fact that this part of the line held for as long as it did kept the army from being trapped and kept the American Revolution alive. Um, that's the most important thing. We cannot change. Nobody can change. That's our history. Okay? I'm Thank sorry it took so long. Thank you, Mr. Vosgard, I appreciate that. I lived here for 33 years. Um, my wife lived on Cheney Drive when she grew up. Uh, we lived just on the other side of Stetson. Uh, but before I start, could I ask by show of hands of the supervisors, how many of you folks live on the other side of 202? Do you mean the west side of 202? The west side of 202. I think it's just like Mr. Wolf. Mr. Right. Wolf. Okay. I only do that only because I think you need to have a personal stake in what we're going through on the, the other side of 202. Uh, and I'm sure Mr. Wolf uh, knows that. Um, first and foremost, I have a concern about the, obviously the traffic. Um, you go down here on 926, 8 o'clock in the morning, and it's, uh, it takes you about 20, 25 minutes to get to the light at 202. That being said, um, the traffic gets backed up from 202 all the way back almost to New Street. I don't believe there was any eyeball testing done on the traffic recommendation based upon the traffic patterns. Secondly, I don't think they took into account how, how to get to 202 now that they've closed off Rosary Lane in West Goshen Township. Thirdly, we now have West Town Woods and Jacqueline Drive and speed bumps. I'm not sure that's the best solution for traffic pattern in, in our area. And lastly, regarding the traffic, uh, I think that whatever is done traffic-wise, I think Toll Brothers and PennDOT are a package deal, and they need to be lumped together in, in whatever uh, street resolution is done. It's not just a Toll Brothers problem, it's not a PennDOT problem, it's a gross uh, traffic problem that has to be solved. Secondly, on the water, um, uh, uh, water table and runoff. Um, about eight years ago, we had a, uh, an event called Hurricane Ivan. Creveley Farms was not rolling hills. Creveley Farms was a brown lake. 
and I feared that any an increase the uh, storms we're having is going to make the problem even worse. So we go back. I couldn't get home on South New Street for a day or two because of the water situation. Don't know whether you researched it or not, but I think you ought to take a look at it. Uh, also, too, the economic assessment, I think, is incomplete. Uh, how long is it going to take to sell these houses? Uh, what about the um, impact to our uh, housing values and property values? And also, what's going to happen in terms of increased costs on our property taxes with new schools and infrastructure? I guess, bottom line, quality of life in Chester County is at stake. Um, that being said, I think you folks did a tremendous job. I was to all the meetings, the planning meetings, and the supervisor meetings, all except one, <laughs> and I'm glad your heads didn't explode, because it's been a, uh, a real challenge. So thank you again for your service, and uh, hopefully the quality of life will be sustained. Thank you, Mr. Senator. <laughs> Cecilia Wright, 1151 Lake Drive. So at the suggestion of one of our supervisors, what I'm going to do is we're going to call off the next one as well so that we can just have you at the ready as soon as the, the next person is done. So that's Mr. Pomerantz. Dick Pomerantz is 1005 Robin Drive. We can have you next. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. I appreciate the attention that you've spent to the details and are allowing us to comment on them. I've sat through every meeting but one, and um, I think it's a shame that it was left to the very end to have um, comments from the public because that's who's going to be impacted. I doubt the people that are representing Toll Brothers or the people that they have as specialists live in the area that's being impacted. I, I highly doubt it's a personal uh, issue for them. Maybe it is, but I doubt it. Um, your decisions are irreversible. You are holding a very heavy weight on your shoulders. This is something that's going to impact not just the people that are here and concerned, but their children, their children's children, and their children's children, and so on. So you are looking at hundreds of years of your decision and what people will think of what goes on with the property and why with, with the decisions have been made the way they were. <clears throat> I don't, um, I would welcome that for myself I think that um, it is um, a, a difficult and a challenging decision that you have, but I think you should keep it in the foremost of your mind that this is something that is not just offhanded or something that um, can be taken in a careless manner. Um, the differences are numerous for the area. Traffic has been the major concern because we live with it every day. The traffic is horrible. The traffic is not attended to, and the roads stink. There's potholes everywhere. When you look at 202, they're backed up to Matlack Street on a regular basis. So traffic is something that needs to be considered whether the houses are built or not built. But we have significant impacts on our schools as represented by a representative of the school district. Um, the views that will be impacted by a specialist that uh, spoke a couple of meetings ago. We have historical connections that are impacted, sewage, and a significant increase in the township costs, whether that's obvious or not. I think preserving the Brandywine Battle area is of um, utmost importance because of the historical significance and not replaceable. It's something that um, we cannot really ignore. Um, because I'm in research and um, it's sort of uh, something that I'm uh, concerned about, I looked at the extensive um, conditions around Toll Brothers. And when you Google Toll Brothers, what comes up are many lawsuits, many hundreds of lawsuits the Toll Brothers has had to deal with. So I'm not going to get into that. You can Google that yourself. Recently, as of November 23rd, 2017. Um, but there are um, issues that I think is important to bring out is the quality of the building. 
what they intend to build, whether it be 300 or 400, um, the quality of what they build seems to be in question. <clears throat> there are stucco damage, water damage, roofing material is shoddy, faulty construction, failure to comply with building codes, houses um, that were built with vinyl bricks, whatever that might be, I'm not sure. Um, they also, uh, in their budget, have uh, a while back, two years back, um, estimated a liability of $80 million that they needed to pay out. And it's currently at $324.4 million. So they recognize that what they're building is not going to withstand even 10 years of time. The Consumer Affairs website also has leaky windows, defective heaters, mold, foundation damage, trusses is not attached. Well, I would think that would be an important thing. <laughs> so somehow, in the beginning of all of this, once they get whatever they have in their pre-approval and all that um, handle, who is really going to look at what the house, how the house is built, and the quality of the house? Because they have many, many issues with even the state of Pennsylvania attorneys. So I think that those things need to be um, thought about and considered, especially if you are in any way considering 400 houses versus 300 houses. And the other thing that I think that um, uh, the board would need to really consider is um, the value of the area where Mr. Robinson's house stands. So the area where the Brandy Line battle was actually fought. I haven't heard anything that was a real give back to the community that they started on the first meeting. I haven't heard any reason to say, hey, yay, this will be nice. I can't think of one. So maybe that's the consideration, it would be that part of that area may be up to the fence. Let them build the houses along 202 and let the new people put up with the 202 traffic. Um, and keep them off of 926. I don't know how they're going to get in and out of their community. All of you need to drive down Pleasant Grove Road. All of you need to look at the traffic on New Street because that's not insignificant either. Ma'am, you've, you've, you've hit your four minutes, so if you wouldn't mind I, trying okay. to wrap up. I, I actually knew I had. So um, I wanted to just say thank you for your consideration of all the facts that are not necessarily talked about. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Pomerantz is at the microphone, and then on deck we have Richard Weaver at 1014 South Chester Road. <clears throat> so after Mr. Pomerantz is Mr. Weaver. Todd, uh, tell me if this is loud enough for you. Mr. Pomerantz, I've never had a problem hearing you before. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dick Pomerantz, Richard Pomerantz, 1005 Robin Drive. I'm chairman of the West Town Planning Commission. I want to make sure that everybody understands I'm not here speaking as the chairman of the West Town Planning Commission nor uh, am I here to represent um, any point of view other than my own as a 30 plus year resident. Um, many of those who are here had the opportunity to hear and to sit through the planning commission proceedings uh, that took place and the 40 plus conditions that were recommended. I'm not here to discuss those. But this does lead me to three points I'd like to make and it's for the attention of the board. First, on behalf of the residents, a thank you to the board for your diligence in listening to the hours upon hours of expert testimony. And I know more than those sort of members of the PC, we know that as, as many hours that you put in here is as exponentially more of what you've had to read. So more power to you. And thank you for listening. Second, I took the liberty to review all the minutes of every PC meeting we're told, as well as every single page of every transcript of each of the meetings with uh, the Board of Supervisors. They're going to sit, they're going to be decreased in value, and we're going to be left with eyesores sitting on what was once a beautiful hill. I agree that this should be something that benefits the community. Cray Billy Farm, if it is to be sold, should become like East Ocean Park, with trails, with venues for farmers markets, for performances, something that actually will add value to the community versus just more homes that we don't need. I'm afraid that once Toll puts up these houses, they will be like the music man and leave town to their next venture and not see the consequences. They haven't proven that they can maintain the stormwaters or the wells or may even maintain the traffic that is already so horrendous on 202 and 926. 
while we, the residents, once they've left town, are left to clean up their mess, created by poor planning and execution, and frankly, blatant disregard for traffic patterns, historic and ecological value, school district limitations, and most importantly, the current resident concerns. I urge you to vote no. Thank you. Thank you very much. Laura Baselice, if I'm saying that correct, Station Way, no comment. All right, so I'm going to move on to non-West Town Township residents. I'm going to take this opportunity then to make uh, the announcement again. If there's anyone who's come in late, we have uh, sign-in sheets down front that we had asked if you please just put your name and address and whether or not you reside in West Town or you reside outside of West Town. That's how we're keeping track of uh, our public comment here this evening. Uh, so I see some people coming down. We're going to move on to non-West Town Township residents. Uh, Randall Speck. I may have to raise this. <laughs> there, is that good? That work? Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Um, I've been through these processes before. They're very arduous and long. I appreciate the amount of attention that's going into all this. Our farm, as you know, is 1709 Thornbury Farm. We have a lot at stake with this development in keeping our agriculture alive. A couple of different things that have been done in other townships nearby that have been suggested here is to move the homes to the east. We did this with the Brandywine Thornbury development with Cavani when they did that work. It has been done to keep those right-of-ways and view sheds open. Something we've done in Thornbury Township with different builders and all with the Squire Cheney Farm was to put easements on the buildings and barns to retain them. I do appreciate Toll's efforts to keep some of the different buildings off from this gentleman's farm era. I would like to see an easement though on the facade of the barns, the scale, and some of the other minor home structures that are being retained. So if they were to burn down or get recreated, they are still in some image of the farm that we remember. Their history is getting slowly erased from the township. I think it's important that maybe also is one of the conditions, the home on 926, which is fairly mundane, a lot of the homes didn't get a full formal history review, in my opinion, that that home could be pulled out of the density and just sold <coughs> and with the retention to keep that as some history to the 926 corridor. I think that is important. One of the things that we strive for on our farm is agriculture and everybody, which I haven't heard yet tonight, is the deer population. For us, it's very important. Last year, we lost $8,000 in just tomatoes from feeding very hungry deer. <laughs> um, Toll has done this before with other developments, have done deer pushes and things like that. We also ask in the HOA um, if this is in any form approved that those covenants be put into having a deer management program because if those deers can harbor along the stream beds in that area and come over to our farm to eat, we could not continue to do our farming as stated by the current farmers of Craig Valley. One of the things to do is to look at this as a whole for the community and figure out how we can work and push the density perhaps to the east so it does work for farming and residents in the area and keep our history alive and keep the buildings that we remember and the view sheds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. <laughs> Next at the microphone is Ann Satterthwaite of we uh, Weatherstone Drive. And after her is Diane Imanides. So, dear weather. Um, West Town Supervisor. I have lived in Chester County in East Goshen and Willistown Townships for the past 54 years. In those years, I've seen numerous family farms devoured by housing and shopping developments in West Town and other townships in Chester County. Where I once relaxed and enjoyed driving by beautiful fields of livestock and grain, I see houses, townhouses, stores. With all this development, traffic has grown exponentially. Nowadays, I spend my time stuck in traffic on Route 1, 3, 202, 322, and 926. With all the building and traffic, I can uh, certainly say that my quality of life has did, uh, also diminished exponentially. As supervisors, 
are you not charged with protecting the quality of life of your West Town community and the adjacent township communities? This past spring, the Toll Brothers traffic person, I don't know what her name was, said that the current state of traffic near Cray Billy Farm is rated as F, with an additional 600 plus cars, if calculated as two cars per unit, the rate will become an F minus, 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 minus. Is this not adversely impacting the quality of life of the West Town and surrounding communities? In 5, 10, 15, or 20 years, would you as supervisors like to be remembered as the township supervisors who allowed Cray Billy Farm, the crown jewel of West Town Township, to be developed into houses? Conversely, wouldn't you like to be remembered as the supervisors who stood up to Toll Brothers and protected the last large family farm in West Town Township? To quote the Wilstown Conservation Trust on their website, our land feeds our bodies and souls it is the most important legacy we can pass on intact to our children and grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. At the microphone now is Diane Limonides, and next after her is Marie Kenya of Newtown Square. My comment is a plea for open space and historic preservation. We are all aware that our open space is dwindling, and it is our region's most cherished asset. We can't take back developed land, and it is our responsibility for future generations that we plan carefully, with purpose, for tomorrow. Please vote no. Thank you, Mayor. At the microphone now is Marie Kanyam, and after her is Mindy Rhodes of West Bradford. Thank you. I'd like the record to show that although my post office box is Newtown Square, I live at Willistown Chase in Willistown Township. I don't really live in Newtown Square. And that's because where my development is, the, new, the post office couldn't handle all of our mailboxes back in 1997. So we have the Newtown Square post office. You cannot regain open space once it is lost. Just as you and I have been enriched by such fields and meadows, our children and children's children deserve to have open spaces to enjoy. What does it merit a community to gain more houses but lose their open space? Imagine a plaque placed on the farm that says, this open space was saved for you by West Town Township residents and supervisors in 2017. Or a plaque that will read, this development has robbed you of the enjoyment of beautiful open fields by West Town Township Supervisors in 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Mindy Rose is at the microphone, and after her is Carl Bayless. Mindy Rhodes, 331 Broad Run Road, West, West Bradford. I was born and raised in Westchester, and when my father bought our farm on General Howe Drive, it was a dirt road. I've seen a lot of change in my 44 years. I'd like to address Andrew Seaman, the developer. Thank you for being so gracious any time our paths have crossed in this last year. If you are granted conditional use by this board, I realize that legally you will have every right to develop Crevely Farm under the current application submitted. I do not like it. I do get it. Just because you can does not necessarily mean you should. And I have faith in you that you can do better than the plans we have seen so far. 
I wonder if you would, in this case, think outside the box of so many typical development projects by your company and consider a different direction for Crepley Farm. What if you permitted a phase one archaeological survey? What if you made the decision to protect our national history and keep the development out of the Brandywine battlefield swap? What if the Civil, Civil War Trust, Preservation Pennsylvania, our county, state, and local conservancies pulled together to purchase that part of Crebley Farm and buy down the development rights? What if you were a catalyst to help bridge the gap between the Robinson family and Westtown Township? What if you helped the landowners see a bigger picture in a different way? What would the national headlines look like for your company once the media caught wind of Toll Brothers develops historical land thoughtfully and saves American history? Every one of us in this room stems from the events that occurred September 11, 1777 on the land of Crubley Farm and the surrounding area. That was the birth of our nation. To the Westtown Township Board of Supervisors, thank you to each of you for your hard work and thank you for taking this so seriously. I can imagine this isn't quite what you thought you signed up for, yet here we are. A development of this magnitude will permanently cripple our community. When I try to imagine what Westchester will be like without Crebley Farm, and then upon her demise gain such an inappropriate massive development on historic land, I equate it to severing an artery and leaving a gushing geyser that will never recover. Over the last year, I have attended every single Planning Commission meeting and conditional use hearing. I can honestly say never in the 50 plus hours of meetings and testimony, nor in the countless letters, emails, and phone calls I have exchanged over the last year regarding this subject, have I ever heard a single soul say, gee, I really can't wait for that historic farm to get developed with over 300 houses. The fate of this community and surrounding communities lies within the decision the three of you make. Please keep going. Please do not give up. Find a way. Prepare to strap in for the next chapter, as the rest of us are already prepared to do. The people of Westtown Township are your constituents. They voted for you. They chose you. The three of you work for them. Though I think it wise to be frugal when spending other people's money, it's their money. I think their message has been clear and consistent. Do not grant conditional use to this developer. Please leave no stone unturned. If not you, then who? Thank you. Thank you very much. At the microphone now is Carl Bayless. After Mr. Bayless is Ken Lawson. not just this township, it's not just this state, it's not just this country, it's the whole world right now that faces this kind of issue. And the issue really is development and overdevelopment and what kind of effect does it have on the people that live there. And it just seems that people somehow equate those two things. And I don't, I've never quite understood it because overdevelopment and development are not the same thing. In fact, they're exactly the opposite. Because development, on the one hand, is something constructive, it's positive, it enhances a community. Overdevelopment is totally destructive and destroys a community. They are not the same thing. And you reach a certain point where you just have to say, you know what? Enough. No more. And it's it's really a common sense kind of decision. You don't even, and, you know, I've been listening to all the different studies and the experts and 
testimony, and I'm thinking, you know what, you really don't need those things to know. Like, for example, do you really need a traffic study to know about traffic around here? Seriously? <laughs> I mean, I live in Delaware County, but it's the same general kind of a thing. It's gotten to the point, even there, where depending on what time of the day you're going to travel, you really have to think, you know, I can't even go anywhere right now. Because if I even try to move, I'll sit in traffic for 45 minutes. I might as well wait 45 minutes and then go. Or you might say, well, you know, I can't take this road because now oh, it's going to be so crowded, I've got to go 10 miles out of my way to make sure I can get there. Well, is that the kind of community you really want to live in? Can anyone say that doesn't affect the quality of their life? That it has no meaning? I mean, these kinds of things are not abstractions. And that's a real point that needs to be brought out. You know, people talk about these things and people scoff at them. Oh, they're just concerned about these stupid things. Just a fool with pie in the sky notion. These irrelevant things. No, they're not irrelevant. These are everyday things that you actually live. And getting back to traffic, that's not philosophical. That's not speculation. It's not theory. That's reality. You're in the traffic, you don't need any studies to know about it. And you know that if there's another community and even more cars, we well, can add one and one, and you know that it makes two, and if you add two and one, you get three. So, for all these reasons that I've talked about, plus just the general, I want to add another thing, just the general quality of life. You know, open space, again, it's one of those things People will talk about it, and people stop. Oh, you know, they have their head in the clouds somewhere. No, not at all. My feet are both right on this ground, right on the floor. Because open space does affect how you feel about the place where you live. I'm not saying you have to keep everything open, but if you develop to the point where you have nothing left, where everything around you is concrete and steel, it starts to affect the quality of your life. That the place you called home, it's no longer home. It becomes just a place where you happen to exist, but it's not a home, and there really is a difference. You know, your home means something to you. The place where you exist, eh, you could move somewhere else. It wouldn't make any difference to you. So open space is critically important, and it, it has value. You know, again, this is not an abstraction. It's not philosophy. It has real, everyday value. And if you feel your community is a place that you truly love, that has a, a meaning for you, because you carry it around with you 24 hours a day. It affects your psyche and how you feel about your own life. Mr. So, Bailey, can you get your four minutes? Oh, okay. Just ask if you can wrap up. Okay, well, I hope that you will, for all the reasons that I have given and all the reasons other people have given, I hope you will absolutely say enough. Enough is enough. And stop this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Lawson is at the microphone. After Mr. Lawson is William Worth of Meeting House Road. Thank you. Thank you to the Board of Supervisors for your work here. And thank you to the audience and my fellow citizens for coming here. I, I feel kind of awkward having my back to the citizens because the citizens really are the ones that are in charge here. And I mean, whether we embrace that or not is another question, but ultimately the power in our country and our system lies with the citizen. And certainly that is no uh, less true now than in any situation. We'll decide what happens here. Okay. Ultimately, the citizens will decide. Um, about three years ago, I went up to Boston and I was at Nathaniel Hall and I, and I walked in to see the place and I told them I was from Brandywine, very proudly, and, uh, and they just sort of shook their head and said, oh, what a shame, and I, I didn't know what they meant. And I said, what do you mean? And they go, yeah, we, said, we hear what's happening down there, it's really terrible. We're, this is a national embarrassment, what's happening to Brandywine Battlefield. Okay, it's a world embarrassment what we're doing to our Revolutionary War battlefields. This whole discussion about whether it's a swath that the Hessians march through, it's insanity. There has not been a real discussion that I've heard 
about this whole issue, about the history that we are contemplating destroying forever. 240 years ago, something happened right on Prairie Billy Battlefield. We know what happened because there was maps drawn at the time. We know what, what happened because Robert E. Lee's father was there, and he wrote in his memoirs about what he, what he saw there as a member of the Virginia Regiment. We know what happened there because the Marquis de Lafayette came back and told us that shedding blood at Brandywine, very close to Great Billy Farm, was the greatest honor of his life. We know what happened because George Washington was right at Dilworthtown, very likely rode up as he was often want to do, to be with the front lines and saw what was happening on Craig Billy Farm. We know what happened because Pulaski's charge that turned the Brandywine red with blood of patriots happened right at that location. And we're thinking about developing it and turning it into a, 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 a home village of 400 homes, of destroying it for the next 240 years. Let me tell you something. Everything that we say here Everything with the technology that exists today, every word that's spoken, every word that's written, every picture that's taken goes quickly into a database. That goes into a cloud. You know what happens? That goes into an AI inference engine and its parts. We know what happened 240 years ago on Craig Billy Farm because of hand drawn maps. But make no mistake about it, in 240 years from now, when researchers and historians go back to, to, to figure out how these battlefields were ever destroyed. They're going to know exactly who did it. They're going to know the, the descendants of who, uh, who said what, what side they were on, how they contributed to saving this battlefield or destroying it. There's no hiding place 240 years from now. Everything will be known. So keep that in mind. Um, we have no farther to look than Yellow Springs to see an example for how for how a historic area can be preserved. Yellow Springs is beautiful. You know, Yellow Springs wasn't even a battlefield. But during Valley Forge, that's where Washington had his troops, his sick men, taken, and they, and they died there. So it's very much a burial ground, um, but it's, it's beautifully preserved. There are, no doubt, many burial sites in and around Craig Billy Farm, and you know what I heard we're going to take one of the likely locations on the battlefield uh, where, where bodies very likely are buried and use it as a cesspool. That's true. Um, I'm probably running out of time here. I've been doing this, as you probably know, since 2014. And I attended, I think, every meeting in 2014. And, uh, you know, I want to thank you for, for your service. And uh, I know it can't be easy. Ultimately, the decision is going to come to you. Ultimately, whatever decision you make and the reasons you give are going to go into the history books. This is history in, in, in its making. I mean, there'll be no hiding place from the decision you make. And you'll be held accountable for it. Either way. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. At the microphone now is William Worth. After Mr. Worth is Stephen Lyons. Good evening. I am co-owner, along with my two brothers, of a 115-acre farm in a nearby Birmingham Township. The farm is under a conservation easement arranged by the Brandywine Conservancy. My wish has always been that Crevely Farm would have gone the same, gone the same route. In my youth, back, back in the 40s, I had many fun times playing around the farm with Jimmy Robinson. One summer I was helping load hay onto a wagon, being pulled the old tractor across his family fields. I could argue for, for preserving the land fought upon by soldiers in the American Revolution and argue against increased traffic. But those arguments have already been well made. My plea tonight to the board 
to the planning committee members is to act upon what you believe is best for the community, the children and their children, and how they would grow to love this surrounding protected land and to carry it forward as their parents did. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Stephen Lyons had no comment. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. And I apologize, I'm having a hard time reading this next one. I think it's Jeanette and Kirk, maybe Lindy? Lindy and Big, I apologize, uh, uh, on Boot Road. We have no comment. Okay, thank you. All right, well, I think we're going to take a 10-minute break at this point, um, allow the court reporter to have a little bit of a rest. Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes to continue. In other words, to a pot of, pot, of, pot of water that is boiling over, more water is added. While the additional water may cool the situation, it does nothing to reduce the underlying problem of volume at the intersection. Much has been said, and all, uh, much has been said, and little, and much has been, little has been done. No, I get that wrong. Uh, supposedly, the relatively minor changes proposed by uh, PennDOT will have a will not only improve current traffic flow, but also absorb the impact of the additional vehicle trips generated by the development. Does anyone who lives in the real world believe that? Even PennDOT doesn't. Even before the Total Brothers project was introduced, PennDOT itself acknowledged not more than two years ago that upon completion of their proposed plan, the intersection's level of service, currently an F, would still be an F. And, would, and they predicted it would remain so through 2035. No matter how many trips are added, the testimony is always the situation will be improved, even if the improvement is from one level of service F to another level of service F. It remains a failed intersection. When I was in school, I occasionally got an F. I did not was not able to convince my mother or my father that I had a, it was a good F. <laughs> it was better than the F I got the prior semester. <laughs> and I think that people here believe that a, an improvement of a few minutes makes a uh, big difference. Particularly in the, one need not be a traffic engineer to assess the potential impact on surrounding roads. What is now a major traffic nightmare they will be a bit elevated to standstill status, particularly at morning rush hours. And testimony shows that the eastbound queue extends from US 202 nearly a half mile back to Broadwood Boulevard and contains approximately 100, 100 cars, meaning it may take 15 to 20 minutes for a vehicle at the proposed Broadwood 926 intersection to finally clear the 202 926 intersection. I think prior uh, witnesses have already uh, made that comment. I'll let you talk a minute about the problems that... I'm going to ask you not to do that, if that's okay. You've reached your four minutes. I'm going to ask if you wouldn't mind uh, reaching your conclusion, please. All right. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> In summary, whether Pendine and some other traffic engineers think we can or should absorb the additional traffic from the, these homes, I ask you to consider the negative impact of Connector Road and its alignment with Bridalwood Boulevard would place upon not only our residents, but the residents of West Town as well. Enough is enough, and the line must be drawn somewhere, and this is as good a place as I need to draw it. The development as proposed for the Connector Road and four-way intersection is the straw that breaks the proverbial camel's back. We strongly urge you to look carefully at the potential scale of this proposed development, and particularly 
to reject the connector road and the creation of the four-way intersection with Flatterwood Boulevard. I thank you for your time and for your many hours you put in and, and, and still have to put in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Ken, Ken Hemphill is at the microphone, and after Mr. Hemphill is Jillian Fitzpatrick. I was involved in the Beaver Valley fight down the road, and I was involved in the Beaver Valley fight down the road, and we, at, in those meetings, Concord Township essentially had one meeting and then rubber stamped the development for a campaign donor, it turned out to be. So it's really been refreshing to see how professional this board has been, how much time you've taken with this process. Uh, we really appreciate it, I know I do. So 100 years of 100 plus years of case law have essentially given us a situation where corporations are people under the law. And because you're people and you have all the same rights as a flesh and blood person, you have um, the right to sue, you have the right to enter a contract, you should pay taxes, frequently they don't, corporations don't. Um, and as one wag once said, corporations have no soul to save and no body to incarcerate. But you are immortal, and you have vast resources, and you come to townships and you run amok like a Frankenstein monster that we all created, because we all kind of agreed to have corporations in our society, and you run amok nevertheless, and you create environmental damage wherever you go. But townships have a weapon since 1971, when the legislature unanimously passed two sessions in a row, the Environmental Rights Amendment, and when it was approved by the general public in 1971, it received the largest majority, and the largest vote majority of any vote that had ever taken place in Pennsylvania history. So, under this Environmental Rights Amendment, you're bound to protect the environment of your constituents. And that essentially means that any, any, present, any project that presents or can cause environmental harm to your constituents, you are bound by the Environmental Rights Amendment to say no. In fact, your oath of office requires that you take an oath of office, your oath of office requires that you follow or promise to ad adhere to the Pennsylvania Constitution, which means that um, in, in that, you, you promise, well, the Pennsylvania Constitution um, contains the Environmental Rights Amendment. So it's really, you have an easy decision. Does this help West Town's environment or does it hurt West Town's environment? And clearly, looking at these plans and listening to all the experts over the last 12 months, it is clear that these plans hurt West Town Township. Thank you. Thank you. Jillian Fitzpatrick is at the microphone, and David Turner is on deck. Jeffrey Madden, which was the stormwater management witness, provided testimony regarding the visibility of the submitted plans for toll. He works for a company called ESE Consultants. I would like to point out on the record that according to the ESE website, ESE Consultants Inc. is a wholly owned subsidiary of Toll Brothers. I would like to point out to Mr. Allen that you cannot call into question the integrity of the stormwater management witness presented by neighbors for Crivelli because she has also represented activist groups in the past when your own witness is literally on your payroll. Ma'am, you would mind if you get a little closer to the microphone. The board's having a hard time hearing you. And can you slow down a little bit because it's a little quick with the reading. <laughs> Additionally, Mr. Madden testified that the soil remediation technique used to mitigate the impact of storm water management. Hang, hang on, Eleanor, did you, were you able to get that? Maybe you want to come to the other microphone, maybe, so she can see you a little better. I apologize. <laughs> I can generally tell from her body language when she's getting <laughs> on. Get real close to that mic. All right. Can you hear me now? Not really. Now. Put it up a little bit towards your mouth. There? There you go. Additionally, Mr. Madden testified that the soil remediation technique used to mitigate the impact of storm water management would fall on the homeowners and would be policed by the HOA for compliance. Therefore, the homeowners are responsible for enforcing that practice on themselves. This is a conflict of interest and that will not happen. If there are no laws in place to demand this, no enforcement agency 
no way to educate new homeowners, and would cost them money, it will not be done. Therefore, I ask the board to realize this is not a legitimate stormwater management practice. My second main point is that the superintendent of the Westchester School District, Dr. Scanlon, testified that the district would most likely move to add modular classrooms in the event that the neighborhood is built and will result in a substantial increase in students. I would like to support the call to assess an impact fee to Toll Brothers to help the school district avoid this. My main reason being I graduated from Unionville High School back during a fight between taxpayers and the district to expand the school to accommodate an increasing number of students. The school district moved to modular classrooms and placed them in the front and the back of the school. I attended classes in these classrooms for two years and felt at risk every day that I walked in and out of the front doors with no way to keep an intruder out. While it's horrible to think about, armed intruders are a part of American life at this point with another shooting occurring at an elementary school within the past month. That school avoided death by locking down the school using practice plans. Modular classrooms interrupt these plans and make it increasingly difficult for a school to protect its students. Though I don't have kids of my own, I would be furious as a parent that if this neighborhood goes in, my school district would have to choose between cutting their current offerings and adding modular classrooms. God forbid anything were to happen at a Westchester school impacted by this development, modular classrooms would surely make that situation harder to secure. As a past student that had to worry about this every day during my final years of high school, I plead you not to put the school district in that situation. Don't risk the safety of students for a political ploy. My third point is that this isn't the only development. There's 150 homes proposed for the tag development. There's 600 units of apartments going in at the Greystone Manor off of 322 near Westchester. You have 110 townhomes currently in West Whiteland Township being built on the side of 202 South. You have 200 proposed apartment units at the corner of Matlack and 202, and a proposed development on Oakland Road near the Dilworth Town Inn. So this isn't happening in a vacuum. This isn't 600 cars. This is thousands of cars in the next five to six years. And lastly, these aren't just numbers on a page. You're decreasing the quality of life for all of us that live here. So Andrew, when you lay your head down tonight in your home on the National Historic Registry, a street away from one of the largest preservations of land in Chester County, the Stroud Preserve, be sure to know that your home choice sends a message. You won't even buy the junk that your company produces, so why should anyone else? Thank you, Dan. At the microphone at this time is David Turner. After Mr. Turner is Catherine Quillman. No comment from Mr. Turner. Quillman. After Ms. Quillman is Elizabeth Morris. Um, I, I included photos so that you're going to get, but obviously people can't see them. Uh, my name is Catherine Coleman. I live in Westchester and I'm a local historian and author. I'm currently under a contract to write a book called The Title American Revolution in the Brandywine Valley. However, my interest in the battlefield dates to the late 80s, 1980s, when I first wrote about a grassroots organization that is now part of the Chester County Planning Commission called the Brandywine Battlefield Task Force. I wrote about this group when I was a suburban staff writer for the Philadelphia Inquirer. There were numerous articles over the years, including one in 2000, that focused on the so-called battle over the Field Point subdivision, originally a Toll Brothers project. I don't know if Toll was part of the final agreement, but only 46 acres of what we now call Sandy Hollow Heritage Park was saved. I bring this up because, with the exception of Sandy Hollow and the recent acquisition of the Dilworth Park, no large-scale parts of the battlefield have been preserved beyond scenic easements. Of course, this greatly saddens me that a battle that has been called the turning point of the American Revolution is now largely crammed with housing developments despite decades of preservation efforts. I believe the entire Craig Valley property should be saved and not merely the so-called battlefield corridor. I also want to inform you of another American Revolutionary site that told in my opinion, has de is destroyed. According to the Rides Preservation Planning, which wrote the so-called historic narrative or documentation, more than a thousand soldiers camped on the former Daniel Evans homestead near the village of Eagle on Route 100 
or what Toll now calls Chester Springs. The property is part of Toll's Byer Station, which spans two townships. Toll's first development stage began in 2001. I have included a recent photo of the Daniel Evans Homestead, where General Wayne joined Washington on September 21, 1777, after the Paoli Massacre. Despite decades since the toll purchased the former Evans and Ewing farm, the 18th century Evans homestead is still used as a toll office and is not being treated as a historic structure as promised. In fact, the so-called black hole of the sewer treatment system is within yards of the house, and the rare spring house slash residence now faces what I call a wall of grass, which is part of a 24-foot high embankment. As you can see from the photos, several trailers have been there since 2001 and they've so, been there so long the wheels are now embedded into the ground. According to Upper Euclid's township records which I acquired, toll received bonus density despite the fact that the Evans barn, described by Wise as dated to the 1700s, was never converted into a clubhouse. Instead, it was raised. To quote the township minutes of 2003, the barn was, quote, was sound in 2002, but changing the roadway grade several years ago shifted the pressure of the basement walls, which compromised the barn. It wasn't maintained and continues to deteriorate. The minutes also speak of Toll Brothers' recreation assets. Evidently, that was more of an issue than saving any historic buildings. In fact, uh, several early buildings, outbuildings, including a long wagon house dating to the 18th century, was damaged by a fallen tree in early 2002 and left to rot instead of being removed, for instance, to Euclid Township's park known as Upland Farm on Route 100. Another barn in West Vincent Township was converted into a clubhouse. However, the early house next to it remains boarded up today. Another 18th century house was renovated by toll, but it was described as cheaply done, and care wasn't even to take to even match the roof of the old roof, the color of the roof, to the new plastic edition, which they call plastic. Uh, and I included a photo. I was told by a local historian that the barn that belonged to this house mysteriously burned to the ground since toll began this phase of the development in 2006. I bring up what was once known as the Evans Ewing Farm because, like Gray Belly, $5.55 million to contribute toward the price required to place Cray Billy Farm into conservancy as of 2015. Instead, over the years, all of the West Town boards did nothing. So here we are, fighting Toll Brothers and the Robinsons to try and save this beautiful farm, our history, and preserve some level of quality of life. When we, when we moved here, I had no idea how important that farm was to the Battle of Brandywine. Mr. Mike Miller showed us how important the preservation of Crayville can be for our future and to our past. Staff rides by current military commanders and leaders allow them to understand the importance that landscapes can have on a battle and allow them to use that knowledge in current military campaigns. I'm a degreed electrical engineer. I've attended all of the planning commission meetings and the board of supervisor conditional use meetings about this development. I have to admit that I'm completely dumbfounded as to how this development can be allowed to move forward. I have never heard nothing about concrete development plans. Instead, I've heard about preliminary design plans, conditional design plans, and conceptual design plans. I don't understand how the BOS can be asked to approve such a complex development without actual concrete plans and specifications. At least the development can be delayed until real plans and specifications can be produced and deliver to the supervisors so that they can form a true and thorough review of the proposed development. <coughs> then and only then can the board make a truly informed decision about whether this development should be allowed to move forward. Also, given the new information about the probability that skirmishes did occur on Craig Billy Farm, it would be completely remiss of the board of supervisors to fail to impose a requirement of ground penetrating radar to determine if there is indeed bodies buried on Craig Billy or other buried historically significant artifacts that would be destroyed upon development. Once you start tearing up the ground, you can't go back. Finally, I want to enter into the public record a portion of a letter that was written by O. James Lighthizer, Lighthizer pardon me, president of the Civil War Trust to the West Town Planning Commission. The Civil War Trust is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization devoted to the preservation of America's hallowed battlefields, including Revolutionary War battlefields. 
According to the date of the letter, Mr. Lighthizer sent this letter to the Planning Commission on or around October 2, 2017. In this letter, he states, with this letter, I seek to convey the trust concern with the Toll Brothers' proposed development of the 322.36 acre site known locally as Cray Valley Farm, located in West Town Township. Significantly, this property is situated within the historic footprint of the bat, Brandywine Battlefield. Later in the same issue, he states, although the Civil War Trust recognizes that people need places to live, work, and shop, we believe it is, a, it is possible to balance development with the historic resource and land preservation so local communities can benefit from the economic opportunities that both can provide. Preserved battlefields are heritage tourism magnets that generate revenue for states, localities, and localities through the county. Through the county. Further, passive and educational recreation open spaces like battlefields contribute to the quality of life of local residents. Sandy Hollow Heritage Park being a local example of such benefits. A housing development can be moved. Historic battlefields cannot, and once they are drunk, destroyed, they are gone forever. There are many other points I could make about the problems that development, this development will cause, from wastewater issues, traffic congestion, school overcrowding, to increased taxes that all of us will be forced to pay for this development. I could also point out all the horror stories that have been made public about other Toll Brother developments. Somebody already thankfully did that. But I'll leave that to all my fellow West Town neighbors. Finally, I urge you to deny this conditional use application based on lack of proper planning and engineering design, loss of quality of life for these residents who will be most affected by the development, significant worsening of already horrible traffic and congestion problems, and the loss of a historically significant part of a Revolutionary War battlefield. Then, if you deny it, you must take action to preserve the farm in the future while providing a means for the owners to profit from the sale of their property as is their right. You can't simply deny this application and expect this to not happen again. Thank you for your time. Ginger Gray is next at the microphone. After Ms. Gray is uh, Jim or Sue Mutter of uh, Jacqueline Drive. Ma'am, are you able to reach that? <laughs> Get some help for the, for the microphone. which I'm sure isn't necessary, that when you were elected to these positions, it was with the promise that you would make decisions in the best interest of the people of West Town. And there, I would challenge you to show us one thing about this proposed development that is in our best interest. We have heard from various experts, a PhD in environmental topics, who warns about Cray Billy being a special uh, consideration considering the streams on the property and the danger to the Brandy Line watershed, which Wilmington gets their drinking water from eventually. We've heard from Dr. Scanlon, the superintendent of the Westchester School District, who tells us that this is going to have a financial impact on our school district. Um, we've not to mention the impact on the quality of life here, and I don't think there's anybody in this room who believes the traffic experts who tell us that a simple left turn lane is going to solve all of our traffic problems. Anybody that sat on 926 or 202 knows this is a fallacy. Um, you know, and then the Brady Wine Battlefield, a portion of the uh, American Revolution where we fought hard, our patriots fought hard for our independence and our freedom. The freedom stand here and speak for ourselves to topics like this. Um, we cannot deny people the quality of life that they moved here for. And if this development is allowed to go forward, it's going to be on your conscience because we're not going to be able to gain back all of what we lose. Why, when we've heard from presidents of local homeowner associations of Toll Brother Developments who have been in litigation for years with these people due to shoddy workmanship, do we think 
that West Town is suddenly going to be different than all of the rest. They're going to build these houses with their shoddy workmanship. They're going to take the money and run. And West Town is going to be left holding the bag. And I would urge the Board of Supervisors to vote against this and protect the quality of life for everyone in West Town. Thank you. Jim or Sue Mutter at the microphone, and on deck is Francis Field. No comment for Francis Field. Thank you. Thank you, Sue Mutter, 604 Jacqueline Drive in West Town. Um, I just want to thank our supervisors for your time, for your careful consideration of all of this evidence and information that you've been listening to for over a year. For every person that came out on a Monday night after a long Thanksgiving weekend, you can be sure that there are dozens and dozens of residents who feel just as passionately as we do who are unable to be here. And I've seen them in over the year that we've been attending meetings. I've seen many, many faces. I've yet to meet a fellow resident who feels even mixed about this development. Um, and as everyone has already said, I don't see any benefits to it. But while I have confidence in you guys to um, to consider all the evidence. I ask you to be brave, as brave as the men that fought on this sacred land, to vote no, don't fear threats of lawsuits and deep pockets that Toll Brothers has. The, we're behind you. We'll support you in that if you vote no. And if you are unable to do that, then attach every condition that you can um, to this development, and again, we support you in the long battle ahead. But what I just want to draw attention to is that these two men are the representatives of Toll Brothers, so they're the faces of Toll Brothers. I'm a substitute teacher in the Westchester schools, and they're reminding me of a couple of middle school students sitting in the back of the room snacking with their legs crossed on their iPads. These two men and Toll Brothers do not deserve to stewards of this historic, sacred, precious land that cannot be replaced. So, vote no. She did a picture of Cole. Mm -hmm. yeah, she did a picture of Adam. Thank you, Dan. Next to the microphone is Michelle Barbecue. After Ms. Barbicane is Bob Mastrovito of Sharon Circle. Good evening. I'd like to first of all thank the board for representing us as citizens and residents of the township. I have lived here 26 years. I am on the west side off of West Pleasant Grove Road. Uh, coming here this evening, I had to wait for three traffic lights coming out of West Pleasant Grove Road just to make a left-hand turn to get down on 926. Um, I, I was going to talk a lot about the traffic. I think we've discussed that pretty thoroughly. It just aggravates people who live here tremendously. Since I first moved here, it has gotten progressively worse. I can't imagine how difficult it will be to maneuver yourself around this township with the addition of that many more residents and cars. Uh, we no longer can make a left off of West Pleasant Grove Road. If you go the opposite direction, you can no longer make a right onto Rosary Drive. So I know to get places, I'm going down and making U-turns and going backwards and forwards. So it's it's already bad, and um, I would implore you to really have that be a consideration. Yes, we would get more tax revenue in the township. You also will have a lot of very, very aggravating people who live here. I moved here because I thought it was a beautiful and lovely township. I still think that it is. It just, I implore you to follow your conscience in making a decision about taking the gem of our township away because once it's gone, it's gone and there's no getting it back. There's a history, there's a beauty, 
there's a flow in this township that is being interrupted and disrupted daily and we really don't want to make it worse and I, I know that you guys work hard and you spend a lot of time devoted to this township. I thank you for that and I hope that you will bear in mind that you are representing the residents and it's the residents who want to stay here and live here and do it in some sort of a peaceable, smooth manner. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bob Mastrovito is at the microphone, and after Mr. Mastrovito is Rebecca Dahl of Lake Drive. Bob Mastrovito, 825 Sharon Circle. Yeah. I've been a resident of the township for uh, about 33 years. Recently, uh, I read about Toll Brothers being able to build a new community on Teeper Road, East Bradford Township. I read a little bit of the approval, and when I did read it, it upset me a little bit when I said, when I read that East Bradford Township was reluctantly approving the uh, development on T. Brew because of Toll Brothers being able to skate under the law, just barely meeting the minimum requirements on all the conditions that they set forth, such as the same con similar conditions that West Town is imposing on pre -ability. And what I'm asking is that the uh, Board of Supervisors look at the 48 to 50 conditions that were submitted by the Planning Commission. And if those conditions are not met 100% by Toll Brothers, that you should vote no. Maybe give them a little tolerance, 95% of everything. But you should look at that and don't have anything that you would be doing in a reluctant way, either 100% approval or 100% disapproval. Nothing in between. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Rebecca Dahl is at the microphone. Good evening. I've lived here for 36 years, and I'm going to frame my comments tonight from more of a theoretical. Just because you have the right to do something doesn't mean you should. And just because you can, should you. It's not can you, but should you. And that's what I feel like this development is. They can, but should they? We have a beauty of open space and is what makes Chester County unique and unfortunately desirable. This can cause an endless cycle of development. More people, more schools, more development, more problems. And I'm, I'm afraid that we're not addressing the unintended consequences of this project. Progress and development is not automatically or always a good thing. We have seen endless development in the past 20 years of shopping centers, homes, schools. We've seen increase in traffic and unfortunately increase in very deadly car accidents on 202. We've seen a decrease in open space and meanwhile wildlife is being pushed out, our quality of life has decreased and we are seeing endless cookie cutter developments on what was very unique and historical homes and very unique developments. At such a high price point I'm afraid these homes will not sell. Average families are not going to buy these homes. And there's one comment that Andrew from Toll made in response to a question during the PC meeting that still resonates. He basically was asked the question, from everything that you've heard, and he was asked this at almost every meeting, have you heard anything that has helped change your mind? And he said, no, I want to keep hearing and listening to all the way to the end. Respectfully, it would appear that as of this point from what I've read, there's been no flexibility on the part of Toll. They have, as I one everybody would have ex expected, they've argued against about everything. And they, if they've agreed to any change of plans, I simply haven't seen them, but of course I may be looking in the wrong places. In turn, fairness, I took Toll at face value to be open to any of the ideas, any of the recommendations, any thoughts of, of uh, expert testimony, as well as the residents. Instead, I think what we've seen, and, and I say this with respect, 
is, is intransigence. It's been the toll way or no way. And I understand the job that both Andrew and Greg have to do. Um, they both have uh, their jobs to do, and I, re and I respect both of them, as, as I do with the Robinson family. One of my favorite comments or, or pieces of literature in the Pulitzer, is the Pulitzer Prize winning Profiles and Courage by John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And this is really for the board. As you decide and make a decision as to what, where you're going to take this process to, I want to remind you, if you haven't read the book, read it. It has to do with the challenges that range from, that people had to make, that range from conflict to moral leadership. And the different uh, decisions they had to make where they didn't go for the expedient decision. And in, in so, do so, do so doing, they showed graceful courage under the most intense pressure. And thus, if you feel that Toll has demonstrated a genuine concern and care for West Ham in terms of, of their proposal, of, of Toll's proposal, that, it is, that Toll has demonstrated a sincere understanding of how important Cribilli has been to us, and that their proposal reflects the history and understanding of the history and cultural character of the township, then as if you decide to approve, then hopefully you'll approve it with the almost four dozen uh, conditions that were um, suggested or proposed or recommended by the uh, Planning Commission. However, should you conclude that Toll's interests have not sufficiently reflected that of, of what Crabilly has meant to the township, and instead has looked at Crabilly as a piece of property to fill with houses strewn across its landscape, instead of it understanding that uh, for us in this township, um, it's an iconic centerpiece of our township. And if you understand that, and if you see it that way, then I strongly and respectfully encourage you to take the road less traveled and much more challenging by voting no to this development. And then find a way. And then hopefully, through the leadership of the board, the township manager, Mr. McKenna, the good faith of the Toll and the Robinson family, find a way to make the Robinson family whole and Toll whole, while at the same time allowing the Crabilly to remain the soul of our township. Thank you. Actually, Mr. Palmer, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Jody, can you grab that from him? We'll collect any of the written statements that you have. Again, we're marking them collectively as a board exhibit. Uh, Richard Weaver is at the microphone, and on deck is David Robb, R-A-A-B, of 112 Froome Avenue. My name is Richard Weaver, and I'm a resident uh, of the township at 1014 South Chester Road. I've been a resident of the township now for 32 years, and I basically uh, have one overriding question uh, to the Board of Supervisors, and that is, other than for the additional tax revenue that this development will bring. I would like to hear one, one benefit that this development is going to bring to the residents of this township. You put out a lot of uh, public notice of how important the residents of West Town are and that West Town is its residents. This development is going to do nothing but create problems for your residents. And I cannot see any possibility that the increased tax revenue has of coming close to balancing that loss to your residents. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rob, David Rob? I don't have a comment. No comment. Thank you. Marilyn Powell? No, no comment. I'm just listening. Okay. Um, Ellen Steele? No Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Bob Dahl, 1163 Lake Drive?
Hi, I'm Bob Dahl, uh, 1163 Lake Drive, and I'm a 35 year resident of West Town Township. Uh, I just have an observation and then a request. Uh, there have been many issues raised over the past year, uh, such as the traffic situation, the schools, taxes, waste treatment, and the uh, history of this piece of property. My primary concern has already been addressed here very succinctly over the past 15, 20 minutes, and that's the traffic situation. I think we can all agree that a minimum of 700 vehicles will be added to the traffic congestion that, we, that already exists along Route 926 between 202 and South New Street. And I don't see where any of the proposed recommendations of the traffic engineers would resolve this problem. My request is, that I, and I ask the supervisors, when you're deciding how to vote on this project, that you please give a lot of weight well, to all the issues, because they're all important, but to the traffic issue, and that you also give weight to the fact that your vote will either maintain the beautiful landscape that we have at Cray Billy Farm, or you will change it permanently. So I ask you to give those matters a lot of weight when you're making your decision on how you're going to vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dahl. <laughs> Gloria Dahl is at the microphone. Jennifer Kramer is next after Ms. Dahl. Um, I live at 1163 Lake Drive. Lake Drive is in between New Street and Birmingham Road, right off Route 926. Uh, my first comment, I want to applaud Mr. Vosberg for mentioning the wells. If the wells were to get damaged by this development, I also feel Toll Brothers should fix the water problems that would result. Um, aside from that, I'm addressing the township supervisors. I'm not going to repeat what has been discussed regarding traffic, emergency vehicles not being able to drive through, and the possibility of having to build a new school and the history and environment. I ask the township supervisors to think of the citizens in this room and other residents of the area before you cast your vote. Think of the fact that none of us want 300 plus new homes in our area. Think of how this would impact West Town. I would like to mention that the Creebilly Farm site could benefit the community by making it into a year-round facility. It could be used for daycare, winter and summer sports, wedding venue, biking and hiking trails. I implore you, the township supervisors, to think of the citizens of our beautiful township before you cast your vote. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Jennifer Kramer is at the microphone, and after her is, uh, I believe it's Kirsten Kramer of 1046 Dunvegan. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, first of all, I'd like to thank the board for their work so far. Um, my family has lived on Dunvegan Road since 1980, and I have lived here my entire life. So we are clearly invested in West Town's development and improvement. Um, I know others have mentioned it, but I'm also going to talk about the traffic. I've been very skeptical of the due diligence done towards the traffic studies. I attended, um, attended Representative Kamita's meeting with PennDOT earlier this year, and it seems like Toll's plans largely correspond with PennDOT's plan to alleviate current traffic, not with the addition of additional 1,200 or so trips per day. Um, furthermore, their studies completely neglected the considerable traffic that travels to 202 through Jacqueline Drive, which not a... Can I just ask you to slow down just sure. a little bit, because the reading is a little, is a little difficult. That's, I apologize, I don't think you're in a row. That's fine. <laughs> Um, furthermore, their studies completely neglected the uh, traffic that goes uh, to Jacqueline Drive through uh, to 202, which not only impacts those West Town residents, 
but also my family personally. We have attended every meeting regarding this matter, and absolutely no projections have been made about traffic coming out of the West Pleasant Grove exits um, from the carriage homes and cutting through Dunvegan Road to get to New Street in the event of traffic, um, and then to Jackman Drive at 202. Um, our neighborhood has many pedestrians and children and no sidewalks, and any increase in non-neighborhood traffic is a cause for concern, much less increased traffic by irritated commuters. Added to the financial and environmental impact of the build and the loss of scenic views and historic resources, there is nothing about this development which benefits West Town residents, only significant threats to our quality of life and potentially our safety. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Kirsten Kramer, no comment. Thank you, ma'am. Leonard Mamakari is next at the microphone. And after Mr. Mamakari is Ann Rapetto. No comment. No comment. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. I'd like to make a brief statement <clears throat> since I haven't won a lottery yet. Tonight, I believe everyone here knows how I stand on Preble Farm with a position the board should especially consider the recommendations of the planning board, which Toll Brothers development can't comply with. I suggest with the tra traffic problems in Township already, and with specific 202-926 problems, that the traffic study presented by Toll Brothers is totally inaccurate, and a study and development would multiply congestion. As far as sewage, the drip system for which the 300 homes in the township, which already has had approval from the Pennsylvania Environmental Protection Agency, I assume that's the right one, to proceed with what I think is monumental in a good year, a good four-year plan. Why should we consider a drip system? Bring back the 10-acre subdivision settlement, if not farming. I submit that to the township supervisors. Thank you, Mr. Malkar. <laughs> Next at the microphone is Amy Harkins, and after Ms. Harkins is Ken and Ann Kanjin of uh, Bracken Court. Amy Harkins, to the mic. No comment? Okay. Uh, Ken or Ann Ken, Kanjit? Thank you, sir. I'm sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. Ken Kanjit from 742 Racket Court. My wife Anne Marie is with me. <clears throat> I'd like to open my comments by saying I respect the fact, having worked in business for 40 years, that Toll Brothers has a business and is trying to make a profit and maximize their shareholders' profits. That being said, part of being a business is being a good corporate citizen and a good neighbor. I don't necessarily believe, I don't necessarily believe that that is always the case. Some cases maybe, but not always the case. I was here for one meeting, and our superintendent of schools was told when there was a shortfall by the Toll Brothers raise taxes. My biggest concern about that is that if the tax base goes up, and it may well do that if the houses don't sell at the projected value, and they drop or get sold off so we don't have some uninhabited eyesore sitting in Craybilly, that the tax base that goes up will drive our current seniors out of their existing homes and damage what we have here, which is a beautiful, beautiful township. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Myron Grubal, 1024 Dunvegan Road. And after Mr. Grubal is Ginger Gray of Jacqueline Drive. Would you like my copy, my hard copy? When you're done, if you wouldn't mind, sir, we would like that copy. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on this procedures. My name is Myron Grubal. My wife and I reside at 1024 down Vegan Road. First of all, I want to express my deep, deep disappointment at this and past Board of Supervisors for the utter and complete lack of action and disregard on doing what many other surrounding communities have already done. 
namely establish an open land preservation fund for this community. As an example, if we took $100 tax per household for every year since we moved into this township in 2000, based on approximately 3,700 households, this township would have had a Start out with a quote from the Cole Brothers website. When we build a new community, we believe in adding something vital to the area, something that measurably contributes to the lives within the community in a positive and dynamic way. My, my whole discussion is basically to see what, how much this development jives with their stated objectives, their stated mission. I'm familiar with meetings like this. I'm, have been a, uh, I'm a geophysicist, I've been an expert witness in explosives, with blasting near houses and so on. And in my uh, experience, I've seen many times at township meetings where a quarry would be blasting and the houses around complain. And one of the problems has been that these, in these situations, the quarry started out in the boondocks, the houses were developed around there later, so both parties are right. The, the quarry is right and the neighbors are right. So who's wrong? The developers. Something inappropriate that they did not do something that they should have been doing. So again, what has happened? We want to find an inappropriate development. Again, when we build a new community, we believe in adding something vital to the area, something that measurably contributes to the lives of, within the community in a positive and dynamic way. So is this appropriate? Is this an appropriate development? If you look at a map of the lot sizes in the area, everything west of 202 in West Down, except for a few small sections, is one acre or so. This development is proposed to be on a third acre and a quarter acre. The estate and the luxury, the um, executive lots. Very small, not in character with West Town. In fact, we went to Lissiter. My wife and I drove out and saw looked at the Lissiter development and could see, in fact, once you got through the claustrophobic entry, you could see that, in fact, there is a section the Toll Brothers set aside for larger one-acre lots. So, in fact, this could be done. This could be done. When we build a new community, we believe in adding something vital to the area, something that measurably contributes to the lives in the, in the community in a positive and dynamic way. So what is the motivation here? The motivation by Toll Brothers, apparently, is greed because, and they're driven by the investors. The conditional use, as I understand it, is to get extra townhouses in, to feed, squeeze more in than, in fact, they were allowed to at the very beginning. Can we move to traffic? Much has been said about traffic. When I saw that first study that came out that ignored New Street, versus and, and uh, Pleasant Grove, I noticed that that wasn't part of the study. And I thought, this is not going to bode well for all of these studies. In fact, when you really think about the study of the uh, traffic in this area, I imagine New Year's Eve, a fellow going into a party, getting drunk, going to the toilet finds the toilet clogged. What is he going to do? Well, I'm drunk enough, I don't care. I'm going to take a dump. And it doesn't matter, because it's already clogged. <laughs> However, when he leaves, on New Year's Day, they're going to clean that toilet. This project is going to dump the traffic here, and nobody, there will be no New Year's Day to clean up the toilet afterwards, after they leave. When we build a new community, we believe in adding something vital to the area, something that measurably contributes to the lives within the community in a positive and dynamic way. 
the history, what has, is this going to contribute to the history of, of the area? What is this going to add? Is my time almost up? Your time is up. I was going to remind you and just ask if you include it, please. Okay. Um, there are two alternatives. One is to have Toll Brothers reconsider what they're doing. And the other is to, in my opinion, have the board produce such onerous um, conditions on this that they feel like that they're not going to do it. That's happened before, I know. In addition, this community, the people that we have here, are committed in opposition to this development. And there are a lot of things that can be done publication-wise and uh, to show that this uh, Toll Brothers operation is not appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. At the microphone is Christine Lisi, and after her are Don and Pat Hayes and Jacqueline Jones. So I'm a West Town Township resident, and I've attended every single meeting except for one planning commission meeting, and I actually had my husband stand up at that meeting for me so that he could talk about the threatened or endangered species that were given in numerous environmental protection reports on the Cree Billy Farm. Um, and I'm hoping that's been passed along. I realize that I don't know if the Board of Supervisors ever received that report, but I gave it to the planning commission. And I also only missed one of these uh, conditional use hearings, and that was a September meeting, and I was sorry to miss it, but sometimes life gets in the way. Um, but I do want to thank the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors for the time going through this. It's obviously been arduous for everyone, even the Toll Brothers side as well, as has been going on for years. Um, it, it was an interesting analogy to follow uh, coming up here, but it did remind me of the one conditional use hearing we had at West Town School when, a toll, when toll Brothers brought in an expert to try to say that the pharmaceuticals that are um, expelled and go into the wastewater treatment system, the expert actually tried to say that there is a bug that humans excrete and that all those pharmaceuticals will be hauled away with the solid waste. I cannot begin to tell you what kind of bullshit that is. And I can't believe, and I can't believe that that's an expert that Toll Brothers would bring out to say that that's really what happens. I can tell you with certainty that is not the case. Pharmaceuticals go into our wastewater. They're changing the genders of amphibians. Amphibians, I can't say the word right now. But uh, you get what I'm trying to say. But I'm digressing because I could follow that other gentleman and made me think of it. Um, <laughs> What he's like. There's no need to talk about traffic because we know the traffic's horrific. Anyone who lives in this township, and whether it's for one year or 40 years, knows that the traffic is horrific. We already know that our first responders in our community are completely overstretched because they're covering multiple townships. West Town Township does not own its own first responders force. Um, the, I thought that the woman who was the expert on wastewater management that spoke at the last conditional use hearing was really good. I just wish she had discussed the fact that a community of this kind of development is going to have heavy use of pesticides and fertilizers, and that's a lot of chemical going into our wastewater treat, our wastewater systems, not wastewater systems, but going into our, our water tables and all of our watersheds. Um, someone else has already addressed it, so I don't need to bring up the fact that Toll Brothers is in thousands of lawsuits. Anytime they do a development, there's, there are always problems and there's thousands of lawsuits. But again, that doesn't matter to this conditional use. The conditional uses are on the 23 different points that the Planning Commission brought up. And I am begging the Board of Supervisors to make sure the Toll Brothers not just, isn't just lightly scratching the surface of those conditional uses that we're really looking at every single point and making sure that the conditions are being met. Um, that's it. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Don or Pat Hayes, Jacqueline Drive. Are either of the Hayes here? Don or Pat Hayes? Anything they have left? Jennifer, is it Stafford? New Street. Hi. 
I'm going to do my best to read my terrible handwriting here. Um, I'm here again in front of you. Uh, it's a matter that's very personal to me on a number of different fronts. Uh, one, I live on New Street, about a half a mile from the proposed development site, and I'm afraid of what's going to become of my front yard once uh, and the road once the development and or if the development goes comes into fruition. Uh, two, our family was given a 150-acre land grant from George Washington as payment for my two great, great, etc. uncles having served as his personal bodyguards. The farm was a working farm about an hour from here and sat in the middle of urban sprawl. With the help of land trusts, local governments, it is now preserved in perpetuity for its historical significance. Just like Creveley Farm, it too is considered a crown jewel in the Delaware Valley's open space initiatives. And three, our family dealt with Toll Brothers directly before the farm was preserved. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, sorry, don't just... Sure. Thank you. Sorry. Our family dealt with the Toll Brothers directly before the farm was preserved, and I had first-hand experience with their tactics and the integrity of their word or lack thereof. Just like everyone here, I care about maintaining the integrity of our local community and what makes it unique, but also about preserving those places directly tied to significant events in our nation's history. The development will strip the pastoral landscape of our local community and forever remove a piece of our nation's history. Study after study shows that the townships and residents lose financially with these developments like this one. Besides taking away quality of life, the open space, and what makes the township unique, it strains the infrastructure across the board. The developer does not absorb these costs the taxpayers do. Studies also show the townships receive great financial benefits by maintaining open space versus incurring financial burdens <coughs> associated with developments of this intense density. Toll Brothers has not demonstrated that they've met the necessary thresholds around numerous environmental, <coughs> environmental concerns, traffic issues, and historical ramifications. Toll Brothers has a long history of not dealing in good faith with townships or homeowners, suing to remove or diminish conditional items after the deal is closed leaving land stripped of its topsoil after economic conditions change, land ruined and unusable. After witnessing toll representatives showing up at my grandmother's funeral, matriarch of our family farm, I can personally attest that they'll seek to any depth to get a deal. The community has made it clear that the wish of priority is not to allow this land to be developed. There are other avenues remaining via land trust, preservation groups, and the township residents that would stand behind an open space initiative from a financial perspective. These groups, sorry, these groups work to make the family whole while allowing the community to maintain open space. I would like to kindly remind the board that they're in the driver's seat here, not toll, and you, pers and you represent the people of the township, not toll brothers. The best interests of this community, environmentally, financially, historically, do not lie in a second-rate housing development. I implore you to vote a strong no on this development. And I'm going to leave you with what I think is a fitting quote that I came across from George Washington. Experience teaches us that it is much easier to prevent an enemy from posting themselves than it is to dislodge them after they have possession. Thank you. Next at the microphone is Peter Dufault. After Mr. Dufault is Ken Hemphill. Knowing that my statement uh, that I have prepared is more than four and a half minutes, I'm going to cherry pick it. I've given a copy of it to, uh, to the board and asked that it be included as part of the, uh, the record that the court reporter is keeping. Part of my working career has been 20 years with a realty firm in northern New Jersey that developed and constructed both office and industrial parks and planned residential communities. I have an appreciation for the complexities of this matter, the realities of the zoning applicable to the property, and the competing interests involved. Much testimony has been given, and there are many very valid concerns, and many have spoken very eloquently about them. I hate to bring up traffic issue, but that's the one issue that Brandywine and Thornberry community has legitimacy and standing as an interested party, so I feel that I must. With all due respect to PennDOT, who has a vested interest, and the traffic engineers who have testified for the applicant, I would encourage them to put aside the statistics, formula, maps, measure, measurements, and technical jargon. 
for a moment and consider the realities experienced by residents. Picture yourself in the following situations. As a resident of West Pleasant Grove Road and the surrounding area, contending with commuters who use this narrow road as a cut-through speedway to avoid the 202-926 intersection during the morning rush hours. As a resident of Britton Village on 926, whose spouse suffered a cardiac event on a weekday morning, and the rescue squad, after negotiating the delay at the intersection, was further delayed because of the entrance, because the entrance to the development was blocked by backed up traffic on Street Road. As a resident of Brandy Wine and Thornberry, who must make a left turn from Bridalwood Boulevard to go westbound on 926 during a morning rush hour, but can't safely do so because of the eastbound traffic backup blocks both the view and the intersection itself. At the heart of these problems is the intersection of routes 202 and 926. It's a long-standing nightmare for every, anyone who lives in the area. And to this, the Cobalt Brothers project would add 317 new dwelling units, approximately 600 cars. It was not only eligible for the National Register of Historic Places, the paperwork was completed but never submitted by the Ewing family. Ewing family. I also want to point that Byer Station has nearly the same development plan as Cray Building, such as carriage houses and single-family single homes. Ma'am? Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but you have exceeded your four minutes. So okay, you I have one more thing. You wouldn't mind concluding your statement. Okay, my conclusion is, as we, many, several residents have said in, this meet, in these meetings, they're concerned for the long-term care of Craig Billy's historic buildings. Thank you. Thank you. I need to go off the record for one second. You have, ma'am, can we have your uh, statement from the court reporter? Okay, at the microphone now is Elizabeth Morrow. After Mr. Uh, after Ms. Morrow is, I believe it's Mr. Mork. Um, can't, I'm having a hard time with that name of Britain's Bridge Road in Birmingham. Go ahead, ma'am. At a meeting to defend the possibility of another option for Cleverly Farm, I shared with Chad Ford Live the importance to make every effort we can to preserve our historic battlefields and to honor those who valiantly fought for the birth of our nation. By keeping these spaces open, every generation has the opportunity to re-witness the battle and hear the courageous tales of our founders. It is about preserving our quality of life historically and environmentally. And I'm told that there is a sign on the property itself that says you are entering the Brandywine Battlefield. This is about principle over profit, patriotism to our country for the larger good, and preservation of our natural resources in blue collar food. At a time in our nation's history where all these things are being questioned, let us not let this moment pass when we have the chance to make the difference. Some have criticized on what merits I present my thoughts, and it is thus. I am a citizen of this state and a resident of the county. I have a vested interest in retaining the beauty of our area for generations to come. Under Article 1, Section 27 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, the people have a right to clean air, pure water, and the preservation of our natural, scenic, historic, and aesthetic values of the environment. Pennsylvania's public natural resources are the common property of all the people, including generations yet to come. As trustees of these resources, which you are, the Commonwealth shall conserve and maintain them for the benefit of all the people. And this is legal precedent. It is the, the ruling that saved Beaver Valley. And to further make my point, John Dernbach, Widener Law University professor, has written about the ERA, uh, the Equal, or excuse me, Environmental Rights Amendment, and his analysis was cited by Chief Justice Castile in this landmark opinion. The right to clean air and pure water is equivalent to the right to free speech. The people of Pennsylvania voted four to one in favor of the bipartisan amendment. According to the Supreme Court, the right delineated in the first clause of section 27 presumptively is on par 
with the rights and enforceable with the same extent as any other right reserved to the people in Article 1, which are some pretty important things, which are also being challenged.